it's a sick bike, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. How much do you want for that? Shroud! <laughs> Shroud! Shroud Storm B! Ha! And we got Adam from Shroud Australia here. Make a high five. Yeah! So let's talk about the bike, man. Let's talk about specs and show this beauty here. So I can quickly notice that there is a gearbox here, man. So like a single speed gearbox, right? Yeah. So we got the strong motor on the other side. Hang on, I'm gonna show, gonna show, gonna show. Wow! So it's pretty much like the normal strong bike. Okay, you see here, it's much, much wider. <laughs> and the face wires, pretty nice as well. Motor control and battery chain hang on go back here we're gonna start talking about numbers and specs the bike is actually pretty beautiful man so how much torque we have at the wheel 520 newton meters at the wheels 520 newton meters so this is like a equivalent to what like just so people have an idea how much torque uh, most five liter v8s make 500 newton meters plus so something like that <laughs> so it's like a v8 doing a burnout but here on a little little bike Wow, so we've got the battery here sitting on top, right? So, oh, see, it's actually like a big long battery, right? And the motor controller here in between. So, maybe let's just remove here the top here so you can actually see it's kind of cool system. So, we actually there's a little tool to remove the two safe bolts here. Yeah, and then I saw this, I was like, oh, how does that work? And then it was pretty obvious once Adam. Uh, did a demonstration here, right? So like two little clips. Yeah, so no tools required, just a little key ring thing you have there. Yeah. Yeah. And this comes straight up. And it's pretty lightweight, isn't it? Yeah, it's only 30 kilos. 30 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to carry another one in the backpack. Yeah, yeah, if you have to. 30 kilos, backpack, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, doable, yeah, pretty good. Wow, and then so this is the rod legal bike, obviously. And yeah, so this one has got the indicator, the light, the registration plate here. And yeah, so, so it's slightly heavier or nothing? It's a lot heavier than the motocross version. I think it's 15, a lot heavier. 15 kilos difference. 15 kilos? Yeah, so what the hell did they put there? Heavier wheels, heavier tires. All oh, right, so it's like a road compliant. And all, and all the road gear. So I don't think the motocross bike possibly doesn't have the um, sensors and stuff on the wheels for the active spin reduction. Um, oh, right. But um, on paper, the motocross bike is, I think, 124 kilos. Wow, so it's that, that much, like a, over 10 kilos in like a things. Something like that, to, yet to be confirmed, but there's a big difference, at least. Wow, so let's talk about the features here, right? Because there's, I remember Adam texting me like maybe six months ago or longer, Say so this got this mode, this mode, this mode, this mode, this button, there's another button. I'm like, wow! So I'll just hold the camera here, you do a little demonstration, all right? So start from mode one. So mode one. I'll turn the bike off and on. Okay. So let's start like that. That might be easier way. So, so it's, got, it's got a nice contactor system. You hear it engage and disengage when you power it up. It sounds like the KTM. Um, He's got all the electric bikes here, man. So he knows all the bikes. Mode one over here is the E symbol, E for economy. The raindrop. Raindrop. Takes us into mode two on the display, or speed two. Yeah. Then over here we've got S for sport mode. Yes. Mode three. Three and levels then, so far. And yeah. then over this side, we've got a turbo button. Turbo right. button gives us an over boost. So where's the light for the turbo? Up, Up here. there. So when the T's flashing, you, the turbo's activated. So it's like a mode four. Mode four, yeah. It's like it lasts for how long? Uh, depending on the battery requirement, I think 30 seconds. Um, 30 seconds? It, it'll start to flash really fast, I think in the last five seconds to tell you that you're about to run out. So wow. it's like a... And it feels, you can really feel a difference. Yeah, it's, I think the peak power of 22 and a half kilowatts is rated. 22 kilowatts? 22 and a half, yeah. Wow. So, in turbo mode, that'd be your overboost function. Oh. Nice power. <laughs> so what I said, there's a reverse function here that it was a very handy. Once you know you have a reverse, you just use all the time, right? Yeah, you think you think it's stupid, but um, once you've got it, you just can't stop using it. So reverse. Yep. So I need to hold, like, keep holding as I'm using the uh, the throttle, right? Yeah. All right. So let's just show what happens here. Uh, all right. Three, two, one. 
<laughs> yeah, well, it's people get stuck, and it's, they, it's one of those things. You're always maneuvering a bike around, and the fact that you can just press a button, press the button, and twist the throttle and do it, it makes it a lot easier. So. Yes, yeah, so if you get stuck somewhere, you just reverse. Yeah, but even loading and unloading and just shuffling stuff around instead of you know, it's, mm, it's, it's mm. hundred and thirty odd kilos this bike. So the yeah. fact that you've got it there. I think I pressed it, I used maybe like a, a good 20 times I've been pressing this yeah, button here. Yeah, once, once it's there, you can't stop using can't it. Can't so stop it. <laughs> you basically pre press this button in here, the R comes up on the dash, and then you twist the throttle whilst holding the button and the bike will move in reverse, which is um, pretty, cool. Ah. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Once you release it, it goes back into forward mode and you're off. So. And you can't really do a burnout and kill yourself. I was trying to do it here on gravel, but it doesn't really. Hey, there's a traction control here. Let's show, let's show. Yeah, so, all right, so traction control. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Oh. Traction control. Traction control, do you see that? Yeah. The traction control is right here. I don't know if you can see with the light on. Traction control. ASR, hey. active spin reduction. So yeah, press that it. three times off so no more traction control oh, so hang on i'm gonna put on mode three yeah and then see what happens so three two one <laughs> <laughs> well, so if you hold just tell your experience like you're accelerating the bike and the bike was going to be weird and you're yeah, like it feels like the throttle's cutting out and i thought at first you had a faulty I, throttle I, was, <laughs> I thought maybe i was resting my fingers on the brakes because the brake switches can act uh, can activate the throttle cut as well so i made sure i was riding clear of those but the throttle was still a bit jerky um i turned off the asr which is active spin reduction active spin reduction and that seemed to fix it so possibly the tire sizes or one wheel thought it was spinning faster than the other and it was implementing some sort of safety but um i actually like i, I tried to go on gravel here just break traction and i was just going zzz. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it feels, you can feel, it's kind of like ABS, but on throttle. Yeah, well, it works on the same principle. So it's got a sensor here counting the rotation of the wheel. So it's measuring the speed front Versus and rear. Versus front and rear. Comparing the two and trying to work out whether one's wheel, the rear's wheel spinning compared to the front. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty simple and smart. Eh? Yeah, yeah. so it's a, it's a basic ABS sort of system, I guess. And it's just chopping, chopping, the, chopping the throttle signal just to maintain stability or control yeah. so it's not um too complicated but an added safety feature yeah so that's ck so the motor is pretty much like the strong like b motor right it's exactly the same diameter and i'd probably bet money that this end plate is the same as the light beam motor it looks identical but the core itself is twice as wide yeah do you reckon the fins are a little bit bigger they look a little bit taller here yeah possibly well they're staggered on this side so they're varied so this the center core is totally different um it's kind of like a square a little bit it reminds me the zero motorcycle motor yeah the heat sinks they've done they've done some different sort of work and it looks like they have more space here to play right yeah well i think the the gear drive system on the other side is um it feels like it, it sounds so different yeah it's it good. sounds crazy like Wah! first time i just went like a uh, 10 meters and i just turned my turn around and i was like with the biggest smile on my face i was like whoa this sounds sick yeah. jeff ballard has been doing some crazy videos showing this bike like uh, unleashing the full potential of this bike yeah. well, off-road and sounds sick man like <laughs> The gear drive noise, I think, gives it a more of a mechanical um, sound to it, as opposed to the Alta or some of those little, not little, but high revving um, electric motors, which have more of an electric noise. Um, this has more of a mechanical noise, like you hear the chain and the gear drive more than the electric motor sort of thing. The so, Alta also screams, eh? Like a regular. Yeah. And the Alta always has that controller noise as well, which is a bit, it, I found it a bit off-putting, but um, I guess you get used to it pretty quickly. Uh, I, I kind of like it. I like all these noises. Mm. Kind of, they're kind of cool. Yeah, like a 
it's you could constantly got back MF going <laughs> back MF going inside your brain that 5G conspiracy yeah. man yeah. <laughs> I haven't been vaccinated so it affects me <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else you got here so yeah obviously yeah the base electrical here so this a DC, DC converters behind that bash plate you can oh, see up right. on the yacht. Hang on, DC, DC converter, whatabouts? I don't know if you can see it, it just sits up here just in front of the controller. Yeah, yeah I can see something there. Yeah, it's a very, very large and powerful controller from what we're told. It can handle 150 volts. 150 volts. So the battery is actually 90 volts nominal and 48 amp hours, right? Yeah, so it's 25S, uh, 15P. Sony VTC6 cells. They're sick, man. They're um, the most powerful and awesome 18650 yeah, cells you can get. But they've done probably a step ahead of what they were on the Live B with the controller. They've made the controller handle higher voltage, so in the future, they could oh, potentially right. supply a higher voltage battery. As soon as they put the big battery on, on market, that's it. No one wants this, well, this it's battery. it's the battery technology that everyone's waiting for. So once the battery technology comes, you could, re in theory, put a higher voltage, more powerful battery straight in it, and the mechanical systems there ready to go, or, and the motor as well. So, <laughs> um, it was nice of them to think ahead. It's a much bigger bike, it's not just, um, yeah, and it doesn't feel heavy. Like, well, of course, yeah, if you stop the bike and you you, you tilt the bike to the side, you, you can feel the weight, yeah, but at, you are like at three kilometers an hour, five kilometers an hour, it feels normal. Like, you it's, can't when you're riding a bike, you can't feel it. It's got a lower center of gravity than most other enduro or motocross bikes, so it sits about 100 mil lower, yeah, yeah. Uh, that possibly makes it feel more stable and not as heavy because the weight's carried down low. All right, that, that bike is actually awesome, man. I'm, I'm actually now that I actually tested the bike a little bit just a little bit like oh i can't i need i need to go home <laughs> and it feels awesome uh, maybe the sound is actually in my head now like wee, 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 wee. so hang on let's talk about the electrical here so what are these uh connections here yeah, so this is high voltage orange connections yeah this is your main um discharge um circuit um, positive negative yeah yeah it's like a proper like an electric car yeah like everything orange, high voltage required. This, this is the communication comms or data, and it's also There's got the, quite a lot of wires here. It's eh? got the charge port integrated in as well. So when you have a look ah, here, you've right. got your main positive and negative, but you've got eight little pins as well. So it's got some sort of um, CAN bus, something CAN bus connection or data interface. So I'm guessing this is also a comms port for reading stuff from the bike, get all the info out of the BMS. So, no, well, on the light B battery, the light B battery has the sep separate comms port power port and charge port so this one's integrated comms and charge oh man well if they want to check, check the oh, whole bike do you reckon, I, I, do you reckon I, this goes a test lead would go straight into here oh right that's a fuse box okay fuse box fuse box it looks like the old obd connector plug yeah, it kind of does yeah. <laughs> Right. So do you reckon this goes into the controller as well? If you have it here, like you can read the controller? I'm sure it will interface because on the light B through the data port on the battery, we can read all the error codes and full charging history and everything. So through the comms port on the battery. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of cool, eh? Yeah, well, it's got the CAN bus connection to the controller. So it's it got, just talks. It's got all the information and it's all stored in the BMS, I would say. So. Yeah, or, so or the BMS on a... the light B is pretty awesome as well. Like it stores heaps of stuff, eh? Yeah, it's... it's a lot of customers are amazed and we tell them we can tell how many times they've charged it how long they've left it flat for <laughs> all the error codes you know, and I know stuff. everything <laughs> dates times it's got a real-time clock in it so it's all um it's pretty clever oh wow so even it's all everything's branded with sarong yeah they've um everything they've, everything wow so show, show me some parts here where they they they, they brand everything's like all the plastics everything is sarong 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 the end of the grips now, all their, all their grips have the Suron, Suron logos on it here. Suron! We got the dragon here. Dragonfly thing. <laughs> power, the dragon power. Yeah, so even here, like, so there's like a Suron injected mode. So they got some money now, eh? Yeah, they're starting to um, get serious and do stuff. Yes, I know the Suron here Especially, somewhere. Yeah. Oh, they've got the production. The little production date maps and stuff like that. So uh -huh. they, they're going for long. All the little plastics, which is pretty cool. So yeah, Sura, Sura, Sura. Looking professional. Yeah, that's a sick bike. So what's the when people asking questions like, oh, when can I go my bike? What, what, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of like, a, all right, this is a 
demonstration bike, right? When, when we've got them, we'll let people know. We've got hundreds of people on the wait list. How many people, just, just here in Australia, like just things like 150, 200 people on the list, isn't it? Like, Probably more. So. All right, I'm gonna finish this video here. So would you like to send a kiss to everyone? Ah, yeah. Good night from the storm, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Hey, Bibi! <laughs> oh, Sir on Bits Bruno Power, he's on the storm bay! Have a look! Oh, yeah! What are you gonna do? Where's the exhaust? Where's the exhaust? <laughs> <laughs>